Preparing your skin for a chemical peel for the first time, specifically the AHA BHA peeling solution from The Ordinary, which you know I love. People love this product, but this product can also be scary. It's the highest strength of AHA and BHA, two chemical exfoliants that you can get over the counter. And if you've never exfoliated before and you're looking to start, this is how I would recommend kind of preparing the skin so that you don't have a huge adverse reaction because skin can become a little bit more tolerant and kind of building up to using a more intensive strength peel because this is not something that you should just put on willy-nilly on like a Thursday and then go outside in the sun with, okay? <laughs> when using an exfoliating peel like this or a peeling mask for the first time, you do want to take it slow. And if you were to come into the dermatology clinic or an office or a med spa to get a chemical peel, we would prep the skin. We would build the skin up so that it can tolerate something like a glycolic or lactic acid or TCA peel. Now this is obviously not as intense as a 70% glycolic, but it's still still this prospect of building things up over time and getting your skin used to some of these actives before hitting them full force. So consider this your how-to guide, but with exceptions of course if you have any of the following contraindications. If you are prone to keloid scarring, if you do have open wounds, if you are on antibiotics that already thin out the skin, if you are pregnant, plan to become pregnant, if you are breastfeeding or nursing, or if you have ever reacted badly to chemical exfoliants like alpha hydroxy acids or beta hydroxy acids in the past, don't do it. If you're thinking of doing a chemical peel, see a dermatologist and an expert first to make sure this is actually going to work for your skin. For example, a lot of people don't realize that if they're on antibiotics, their skin is already thinned out. You don't want to apply an exfoliator, which removes you know, the top layers of dead skin cells and dead corneocytes, in addition to already having the skin thinned out. And for people who are pregnant or breastfeeding, there are some studies showing that maybe high amounts of salicylic acid or specific chemical exfoliants aren't preferred. Now this is why you should speak to your derm or your OBGYN about this, not take advice from the internet. But if you're not pregnant and if you don't have keloid scarring issues and if you've never had a bad, horrible reaction to a peel before, you may pass go and collect 200 doll hairs. Let's start prepping the skin. About six weeks before you actually plan to do the peel, start using a cleanser that has the active in the peel. So for example, this is an AHA and BHA peel. You might wanna look for a cleanser that has salicylic acid and lactic acid. If you were going to do a glycolic peel, you might wanna look for a cleanser that has glycolic acid in it. This being a cleanser is going to rinse off the skin, but it starts to acclimate your skin and kind of get it used to the active ingredient in here. And again, we do this in office and conservatively, I would say start six weeks before you you actually plan to do this. This is also the time that you want to start using a tyrosinase inhibitor, especially if you are someone who is prone to hyperpigmentation and having skin that kind of changes colors or leaves behind dark marks when it gets irritated. Hyperpigmentation is your skin's reaction to trauma, which yes means the sun, but it could also be something like a chemical peel that's too strong or a retinoid that irritates the skin. Start using tyrosinase inhibitors early and this can kind of stop that pathway of your skin being able to create pigment at all. Really good ones are obviously things like alpha arbutin. If you do go to the doctor, you can get hydroquinone, although I wouldn't personally recommend hydroquinone uh, before a chemical peel or something unless your derm recommends it. But over the counter, I would say alpha arbutin is great. Vitamin C is excellent. And just start applying that every day. And that's going to kind of inhibit this production pathway of pigment so that if something is a little bit intense on the actual peeling day, your skin is not creating and not producing the pigment that can stick around and cause, you know, lasting hyperpigmentation or an even this. And of course, you should be doing this all the time, but make sure that you are applying a good sunscreen just to make sure that your skin is staying safe. Now, about two to four weeks out from the actual peeling day is when you want to up it up a little bit. You want to up the ante. Instead of just using a cleanser that has the main acid or ingredient, you actually want to use that in some sort of a serum. So for example, maybe you want to use a glycolic acid serum or a lactic acid serum. Obviously, not something as intense as the peel, but let's say that the peel is 30%. Maybe you want to try to bump it up to a 10%. Uh, the Ordinary also has some toners. They have some really good over-the-counter actives. You can find actives from other brands as well. The Inky List has some good ones. But what you're looking for is this active ingredient in a form that sits on the skin. Again, just to kind of get everything acclimated. And as you can see, we're kind of building up over time. So we're trying our best to generally introduce this to the skin, maybe increase some potential tolerance so that it's not just, you know, a giant shock when you do go in. Now, one week before you actually do the peeling, you want to 
stop all physical and chemical exfoliation. So actually stopping that cleanser, making sure that you're not using that exfoliating serum because we don't want to exfoliate right before we apply an exfoliating peel. You still wanna keep up with any tyrosinase inhibitors or vitamin C treatments, and you do still wanna keep up with sunscreen, but make sure that you're not using anything that has a chemical exfoliant or actually has physical grains in it. You also wanna make sure that you are not waxing or shaving. If you are someone who waxes or shaves your face or the area that you are going to use a chemical peel on, don't do that. A lot of people don't realize that yes, the act of waxing is actually removing the top layer of dead skin cells as well. And you don't want to be doing that, especially right before applying an exfoliant. Two to three days before your chemical peel, you do want to patch test with the exact peel that's being used. And again, if you are using something in office in the derm clinic, that is going to be done by a professional. This is why you should never do a glycolic 70% or a TCA or Jessner peel at home. But I would recommend taking a little bit of this and putting it on the inside of your arm or on the back of the ear and just making sure that you don't have a negative reaction, that you don't have urticaria, your skin doesn't swell up in hives or anything like that. And it's really important that you don't shower. So giving it a good 48 hours to 72 hours just to see what happens. And regardless of what you're using, hopefully it's this, but you want to make sure that you're following manufacturer's instructions. If it says leave on for one minute, don't leave it on more than a minute. If it says leave on for 10, don't leave it on for more than 10. If it says leave on and just go to bed, then fine, that's safe to do. But make sure that you are patch testing and taking before and after pictures just as a precaution. And then it comes to the big day of peeling, which we love, especially because it's exfoliation. I would recommend doing it in the afternoon or evening so that you're not exposing your skin to the sun all day long. Make sure that your patch test turned out well and make sure that you have an acid neutralizer or just water on hand. Know what to do if you're going to get something like this in your eyes and know your backups and protocols and actually check in with how you're feeling. I know a lot of people for the first time they use this, they get really scared. For me, I have grown up with acne. I have very resilient skin. I've done lots of peels and treatments, so I don't even feel this when it goes on. But for some people, it starts to sting and burn after a couple of minutes. And listen, if you are the kind of person where this is stinging and burning and you're only on minute two or three, it's okay to wash that off. You don't have to use it for the full 10 minutes. Use it to the amount that is comfortable for you. And it's safe to chemically exfoliate, you know, about two times a week if you build up that tolerance. And that is what I would recommend. But remember to make sure that you are comfortable. This shouldn't be an anxiety inducing project. It should be fun. It should be a way to appreciate your skin and to try something new that could give you, you know, this great glowing skin that chemical exfoliation can do, but don't overdo it, which is why we don't want to go in with a chemical exfoliant right next to a scrub and like a Clairsonic brush and like five more layers of acid exfoliants, right? When you're done with this, hopefully it's evening. So do make sure to apply a nice moisturizer or something that can absorb into the skin. Again, if you're prone to hyperpigmentation, keep using that tyrosinase inhibitor, maybe that gentle vitamin C and make sure that the next couple of days and every single day you are wearing a good sunscreen and avoiding direct exposure to the sun, especially, you know, during 10 a.m. to like 3 p.m. when the sun's rays are at their strongest. So don't apply this right before you're going to go to the Santa Cruz Beach Ward Walk and hang out in the warm California sun. You want to be smart about it. And some people don't think about this, but the snow as well. Yes, the snow can give you a sunburn. If you have grown up in the Lake Tahoe or snowy mountainy areas, then you know this. But if you are going to the snow for the first time, you're going to have some fun with your family and friends, and you decided you wanted to do a chemical exfoliant, don't do it before a snow day. Because yes, the sun can reflect off the snow. And just because it's cold, it doesn't mean that there's no fear of sun exposure. So play it smart, play it safe. And you might recognize and realize that, wow, you prepared so well that you don't feel this at all. And for other people, it might feel really intense, but just make sure to document your experience, respect that everyone's skin is different. And I think it's better to be safe than sorry. So actually text this video to yourself or send it in an email because you should, you know, ideally try to do this about six weeks beforehand. And again, don't do this before a wedding or a big date, just in case it breaks you out or makes you irritated. You don't want to be looking like a tomato or a raspberry or a walnut, you know, right before a big day. So it's best to try all new skin treatments away from important dates so that you can see how your skin reacts. But send this video to yourself so that you have it when you need it. Make sure to always stay hydrated and reapply that SPF, especially if you are about to chemically exfoliate. And do remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.